So now we discuss the work done by the gravity. So gravity is a force, so it should also do some work done and we are going to discuss that. So work done by gravity. So we have the object here at point A. So we have an object here at point A. Uh, so this object, uh, this is an object here and we want to lift this to point B. So point B, so we will have the same object. And now we want to know uh, how should we do it. The first of all, what we can do, we can just uh, go from here to here and then we go up here. So on the ground we go uh, on the horizontally and then we just go up. And the other way is that we go up straight from here to here and then we go to point B. So we have the path 1 and then we have the path 2. So this is path 1, path 1. And this is for example C, point C and this is point D. So this is the path 2, so this is path 2 and this is the path 1. Another path is that we just go like this so, and we reach the uh, uh, point B like this. So we want to know which path, uh, on which path we will get the higher or the lower work done. So, by the gravity actually, the gravitational force. So first we will calculate the work done by the path 1. So we will take the work, the path 1. So path 1. So it is the work done. So we first go to A, D and B. So we from A point A, we go to point D and then we go to point A, uh, point B. So, so from, when we go to point A to D, the work done is zero because the height is zero. So if the height is zero, the work done is zero. We have the MGH. So they are at the same point, at the same level, since there is no height, so the work done is zero. So the work done from A to D is zero because the gravity, which is a vertical force, vertical force. Uh, so the if the object when object moves from A to D, the object is moving the horizontally on the surface. So the in this case gravity plays no role. So the work done in this case is zero. But when the object is moving vertically, for example from D to B, then the work done will not be zero. And now we go from D to B. So we have the gravitational force uh, and also we have some height. So the gravitational, so the work done is minus MGH. So the total for work done is MGH. So this is the path one. So from the path one, we got minus mgh and the minus is telling us that the work done is in the opposite direction. So we are going this way and the force is uh, uh, in the opposite direction. And now we take the path two. Path two. So the path two is work done from A, C and D. So. A, C and B actually, B. So here initially we have some height, we have the minus M, G, H and from when we go uh, from C to B, again the work done is zero because A, C and B are at the same level, so there is no height, so it is plus zero so the total work done is m minus m g h so what we see here that when we follow the path one we get minus m g h and when we follow the path two part two we get the same minus m g h and now we want to know 
what, we, what will happen if we follow this path 3, which is a little bit complicated, but we will solve it. So, path 3, path 3. So, for the path 3, what we need to do, so we have individual, so we have individual steps here. So, what we need to do as we discuss the work done by the uh, variable force, uh, what we did was we calculated the individual work done, work done for this step, work done for this step, work done for this step, and work done for the last step. So we add, we first calculate the work done for individual steps and we add all of them. So we will get the total work done uh, by this system here. So for example, we have the mg so from so for example from here to here so we start from point a to to this point so we have a small delta y so this is in the y direction so this is the y direction so we have a delta y so this is a delta y1 we have the delta y2 so we have the delta y3 and finally we have the delta y n so we will have the mg delta y1 so that will be the work done by this small step so we will calculate the, for the work done for all of them and then we will add up so the work done directly going from a to b so a b is equal to minus m g delta y1 plus m g delta y2 similarly we go like this so we will have the m g delta y n so we add all of them so we can write since m g is the constant so we just take m g out minus m g and we write delta y1 plus delta y2 and then we add all of them so we when we look at it so delta y1 delta y2 delta we all we add all of them so delta y1 y2 y3 so it is actually the height of this so this height so if we, if we add all of them we get this height so in simple words we can write minus m g h so what we see here so when we uh, followed the path one we got minus m g h when we followed the path two we got minus m g h and when we followed the path three although all the parts were different uh, but yet we got the similar a similar answer for the work done so whenever the work done is independent of the path uh, so whenever the work done is independent of the path the force that is uh, that is used in this work done is called the conservative force and the field is called the conservative fields so the force that we used in this uh, case was uh, the gravitational force so hence proved that the gravitational force is a conservative force so in the conservative force when the work done um, is independent of the path so we will get the same answer in general we can also say that if we go from here to here straight we will get the same answer if we gain, go like something like this but we go to the final path as long as we know the distance the height so we will get the same path same answer so the force so the gravitational force is a conservative force similarly the uh, electric force is a conservative force similarly we have the spring force is a conservative force so they are the work done in these fields the electric field the gravitational field and the spring force so the work done is independent of uh, independent path now we will calculate the work done uh, by the gravity 
in a different way. So again, the work done, work done by gravity. So, but this in this uh, now we will use a different approach. So we have the we will use the vectors, the concept of the vectors. So we have the y, we have z, and then we have x. So we have point A and we have the point B. So we have again in the y-axis we have. So this height, the height between these two is h. So we have point B. So we have the, and similarly we have point B. So for the point B, so we have, so we can also extend this one. So they are at the different heights. So we want to know, so which path, so we want to know what is the work done, uh, uh, work done by the gravity. And we want to prove that it is actually independent of the path that is followed. And we have already proved here, uh, in this way here, but here, now we want to use the concept of the vectors and we will prove again that it is actually independent of the path. So what is the height here? So the height is y b minus y a. So y b is here and y b. So if we take the difference, we will have this height. So we will use the concept of vectors. So we have the force is the gravitational force. So we have the fx plus component y plus component of z. z. So here the fx is zero. So fx is zero and fy is minus mg because f the gravitational force is a vertical force. So the fy, fx is zero and fz is zero and only the gravitational force is acting in the y direction. So only we will have the minus mg and plus zero. So we have the minus mg and similarly for the height since it's the also the vector so we will have hx plus hy plus hz and now we want to calculate the work done so the work done since it is the scalar so we will have the fx hx plus f y h y plus f z h h z since we know that the force in the x direction is zero and we also know that the force in the y direction is zero and also the the height in the x direction is zero because the height they are in the same level and the height the height in the z direction is also zero so the only force that we have is the y direction and also the height so we will get minus minus m g h y so we can also write that the minus mg and this was we just said that it's the minus is y b minus y a so again what we actually see here explicitly that the work done in the gravitational field is actually independent of the path. The only thing that is that matter is the final position and the initial position and the force is the gravitational force. So no matter which path that we use, for example, if we go from here to here and then we come here but it, will, it doesn't matter because we just have the final position 
final position is this one and the initial position is this one we will get the same path and if we go straight from here we will get the same answer and if we go like this and we come here so the work done by the gravity is independent of the path and and this type of force uh, the, this type of force is the conservative force so we have the electric force uh, for example the the frictional force is not a conservative force for example if i go the frictional force means if I am moving the resistive force. If I go like this from here to here, I felt some, uh, I felt some uh, force, a frictional force. But if I go, for example, from here to here, I am feeling more gravity, uh, the frictional force. So the force, the frictional force for this path was smaller, and the frictional force we can see it's longer path. So I will have longer. Um, or more uh, frictional force. For example, I have uh, a frictional force for this part plus this part plus this part. So the frictional force, the work done is more for the frictional part uh, for the longer, if we take the longer path and if it's smaller part, the work done is small. So the frictional force is not a conservative force.